actually looks really cool. It does. Take one. Scene three. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have like a frame in a frame which like represents uh, the claustrophobic nature of uh, being a trans femme in today's society. <laughs> I don't like films that are just like, the end is like, oh well, what, you don't know what you just saw and that's okay. No, like I wanna know like, who is, what is the flying saucer? <laughs> Where did it come from? I think Why is it there? That doesn't Why is matter. there a fucking alien like flying it's, saucer it's, thing? It's, it's not a real flying saucer, it's an, it's an image on a screen. It doesn't have a backstory. Well, I didn't like it. Like, it's not, it's not about, like, I think... It was, so, it was so pretentious to me. Okay, guys. I think it's more about <laughs> what the flying saucer represents, you know? So the question it was so is so pretentious! Like... No, but like... And that's coming from me! <laughs> okay, so... This is our video essay about, uh, nope, a trans analysis. A trans analysis. <laughs> why this trans girl fucking hates nope. <laughs> and why she's wrong. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god, it's like those Ben Shapiro videos, like, debunking trans girl's incorrect opinion on nope. Let's say, hypothetically, nope is actually a really deep mm -hmm. movie and you just don't get it. Yeah. Let's also say, for the sake of that, argument, I just don't get it. Don't talk over me, okay? <laughs> In the end, like, it, like, opens up, it's, like, rectangles, it represents, mm -hmm. like, a screen or a camera, mm -hmm. and, like, the flying saucer represents something to do with, like, the gaze, mm -hmm. and, like, who is represented, who is working behind and in front of the camera, mm -hmm. because it's, like, also, like, tradition of, like, it's, like, black family in Hollywood mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, so it represents something, but I don't know what it is, because it's just too smart for me. I, That's my take on I it. I actually <laughs> did look up, like, a full mess analysis, and... I, the, the director and everyone involved basically just says that it's about the, it's about audience and gaze and spectatorship and it's yeah. about how you film, you know, there were people who were trying to film it yeah. in the face of danger, there was like the monkey danger aspect and like commenting on Hollywood and stuff. Yeah. That's great. I love all of that. I, I love the commentary. I know that is, it's commenting something, but I don't know what it is. I don't yeah. know what the actual thing it's saying is. I think it's just saying that like we as audience members are obsessed with, with being spectators and that we're obsessed with like looking at things that are dangerous and bad. The only thing that's interesting about it is the social commentary. As a story, I didn't think it was interesting. I'm not interested what? in the universe. No, I, I don't care about the flying saucer alien thing. The I really only like thing that. part that I was genuinely interested in was the gorilla attack, which is a real true story. I don't know if you knew that. I don't, yeah. I don't. That was the only part where I was really like, this is creative, interesting. By the that's way. that's yeah, super uncreative. <laughs> and the flying saucer thing was uncreative. I didn't like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> we like this movie. I mean, I'd give it like a four stars. It's a good film. It's well done. Um, we're submitting that that thing right by your bed. The dress. To an art and, um, I'm not sure what 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 do we need to submit? We need um, photos of the art piece, and we need photos of me in the dress, <laughs> and maybe you in the dress. Are we submitting the art piece with the canvas, as in like this, like a two piece in one, or? Is it just I, the dress? I'm trying to sell the art piece as a mixed, as like, both they'll hang the photo of me in the dress and then the actual piece will be like next to it. They will have the, the canvas as well, yeah. not just the dress. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna heat this up and eat it and then if we're still hungry I'll make some more pasta. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, and then, you have a mullet now. Right? Yeah, but I don't know if I want to like, cut the bit of the, the sides though. The growing out a bit too long. I mean, one is like chunky. That, I mean, yeah. we have uh, the skinny legend. This one's and like yeah. This is you. Like this is me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like skinny legend, legend me, by a bit bigger. Let me try to fix it. <laughs> oh no! Is it getting worse and worse? Yeah, it is. Is it? Is it? Yeah, I really fucked that up. It's fine. it's really hard. It's actually it's fine. So you fix it. Yeah, you can't. You don't, don't say anything. No, it's... <laughs> it's... It's not the end of the world. You know? No, we, we can actually fix it, obviously, but it's more of... Um, this one is a chunky one. Stick. That's, that's a shitty ass eyeliner. Yeah, that's, that's the very first true. mistake. You know, that's the problem. That's so true, best thing, honestly, is the eyeliner. It's that's nothing to do with your skills. Okay, this one is super big now. I'm gonna chunk it out. Well, this could turn into an endless cycle. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> it's like here. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think just looking in the mirror, I think it will be fine. Yeah. So we, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's you that's, that's, that's great. Meeting. You're like so good at this. <laughs> Nine oh my God, you ate that up. Can you save this like to the camera? To the camera. <laughs> We need to be, oh my god, show. Sophie, you're so good at this. You ate that up. Wow. <laughs> ain't a lab, no that's, crumbs, that's the only fans voice. Mm -hmm. You ate that up. You ate that up. Thank you so much. This is wonderful. If a man is a man, if a man is a man, if a man is a man, then a woman, a woman is a god. Wait a second, I will do it. Next Instagram story, should we start an OnlyFans together? <laughs> I mean... <laughs>
I'm just trying out the cinematic setting. <laughs> I feel like I identify quite strongly with the sapphic as a, as a concept, as an aesthetic, as a culture and I feel like for me as well like obviously being sapphic is really tied to sexuality but I, I feel really connected with it from like a kind of like tea for tea like just like falling in love with myself as a feminine person mm. and my own body and mm. and hyping up and like just connecting with the bodies of and the journeys of other trans fans and I don't know, I think I really connect with it through like a, a trans fan lens as well. I've noticed that grocery drivers like have suddenly started behaving completely differently around me and it's really bizarre because like beforehand I would open the door and they'd kind of just be like here's your groceries, like, as, like, gruffly as possible and just, like, very neutrally and just, like, here's the thing, done. Whereas, like, now they're like, do you want some help carrying those? Are you sure you're gonna, you're gonna be able to carry those fine? We have four days, four, four bags for you today, ma'am. And then, like, today, my delivery driver, like, winked at me and was like, I hope you have a great day. And I was like, I hope you do too. <laughs> but it's just really strange, because, like, I just like have never been treated this way before and it's like all of a sudden there's this like magical thing that's just shifted but nothing has fundamentally changed. It's just the way that the external world behaves around me that has suddenly radically shifted. Um, and Julia Serrano talks about this light switch moment where like all of a sudden the switch is flipped and she, she was like, well I'm the same person, I feel the same, I know who I am, but then all of a sudden the way that the rest of the world behaves around her is just like suddenly so different mm. and um, it's really interesting. Yeah. It's generally like people reading your gender in a certain way and then like like sometimes you can like in real time see them switching. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. there was like a cis woman uh, who like saw me like from behind and was like, I think this la uh, this lady is in front of me in the line. And then I was like, oh thanks. And then she was like, oh oh, uh, I mean this young man. Oh I'm oh, so sorry. Yeah. Which was kind of uncomfortable because yeah. of, like it was of course like misgendering. Right. But uh, she was like super apologetic. She was so scared of like hurting a cis man's ego in that yeah. moment. It's such a trip how sensitive and apologetic people are when they feel like you're cis and they've like gotten your cis gender incorrect and they're so apologetic but then when you're trans and they've gotten your transgender incorrect it's like well it's just really difficult and i just like you know I, the, the whole thing's super confusing and all of this stuff um it just kind of shows the hypocritical like one-sidedness of this like social dance we do around gender i think i feel like slightly resentful of gender like i feel like it's just been this very like toxic thing that surrounded me my whole life that's like most of my life I feel like gender has been just this like negative barrier of just like gender is the reason why you can't do this gender is the reason why you can't be yourself why you can't enjoy mm -hmm. these things and now Absolutely. it's obviously a little bit different because I've like shattered that barrier but Julia Serrano talks about like, <laughs> this hypersensitivity the youtuber still... voice is just getting more intense and intense <laughs> But no, gender, uh, gender Serrano. <laughs> yeah, Julia Serrano, she talks about this hypersensitivity that she has around um, gender, even as like a woman who totally passes as cis, 
she's still like so hypersensitive around gender and so even when people use like she her pronouns to refer to her which are correct and gender validating she still like twitches a bit because she's like aware that gender is this thing that's being put on her i feel that so much oh my god me too and i've always had like this this mm. like thought in my head which is like am i less trans yeah. because yeah, of you yeah. like that you know i have felt the same thing like i felt almost like guilty about it like oh, this should feel amazing, I should feel incredible that people are using she, her pronouns, but, and, and I do, like, it, obviously it feels good, or but at it, least, or sometimes it just feels neutral. It still feels like an external power, like, mm, imposed mm -hmm. on me, trying to control me, yeah. trying to yeah. surveil me, yeah. like, how do I react to the she, her, you know? Right, right. Do I react appropriately? Mm, yeah, I feel that, and just in general, I just feel this, yeah, like, like, Julia says it's like this high intense hypersensitivity around gender like I'm so aware of it and I can't ever embody it, an experience where I'm not aware of it anymore because that's happened now I have this awareness mm. and sometimes I feel a little bit resentful of that because I sometimes long for a what is stereotypically a cis sexual experience where you're not really people aren't hardly aware of their own gender at all they yeah just live their life and it's like this super minor kind of like artifact of their identity that barely impacts them at all um and i'm just like god oh, that sounds nice sometimes i would like to just not be aware of gender at all people were a group of like um very flamboyant lefty queer people in the 1920s and they were very influential and like f famously decadent and there was a lot of like tapping into like queerness and like flamboyancy and decadence and obviously through this like class lens like these were super rich kids basically um, but they inspired a lot of culture like Great Gatsby is, is very like bright young people. They were very queer and um, I'm just really, yeah, I'm sort of transfixed on them. And I, it's a lot, it's inspired some of my writing as well. So they have a lot of the authors of the bright young people from the 1920s are here. My favorite book is called Lote and it explores, like it inserts a um, plausible black woman into the bright young people in a space where she couldn't have really existed given the race dynamics of the time and it's um i just i just love it so dang much
zoom with this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> do the hair flick again. <laughs> okay. I feel like this vlog is gonna be very female gazy. And it should be. My hair is so curly. L'Oreal, because you're worth it. <laughs> Welcome to the future of work. Inclusivity, diversity, an open workspace environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, socialization in the hashtag meeting pods, hashtag enjoy work. Hashtag enjoy work. You're not gonna own anything and you're gonna be happy. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna love it here. <laughs> I love it here. Help. The government drones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm enjoying work. I promise. I, I love I love working here. It sounds like That's a fracking right. thing or like yeah. like an offshore like oil yeah, thing. Like Fracking TM, Fracking Incorporated. <laughs> Imagine calling a fracking company CEO. Like it's so on the nose. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? How's life? How are we feeling today? Do you hashtag enjoy work? <laughs> the TP. Okay. The CEO is going after meetings. I think it's like 600 pounds an hour to rent it. I think this is Starbucks headquarters here. One of the party members emphasized that the youth must join the movement. And now we must find out where they are. We should all be communists. Everywhere the youth are, we should be. In the bars, in the workplaces and offices, in the concerts and cinemas. We should make sure the movement is everywhere. The situation is quite stressful. Paul and Erica look very different from the rest. And they feel it. Here's why I think I deserve this position. Firstly, I'm really pretty. And that's my presentation. Do I have the job? First of all, thank you so much for showing up today. We know it's like kind of a hard uh, place to find sometimes. But we're so happy to welcome you here at Company Incorporated headquarters in our hashtag socialization pod. Hashtag enjoy work. Um, but there's like a few things that we gotta figure out, okay? Um, so first of all, how do you explain this gap in your resume? I've actually, I actually have been employed during these five years. Like I know it doesn't show on my resume, but I've actually been working really hard at this job called Gender, and I think I'm really good at that job. So that's how I explain the five-year gap in my resume. Okay, with the whole gender thing, I think it's uh, really important as a company to be to be um, 
inclusive of like diverse lived experiences. That's um, inspiring and enriching for us to to be enriched and to be uh, inspired. <laughs> so. <laughs> It is a cabaret club, like a late club. I think it starts. I went, I don't know, like 11 or 12, we didn't get into like, yeah, half or something. Mm -hmm. And then you're getting greeted by like these beautiful women in beautiful dresses. And everyone's like so regal and so like just. Um, re like look so rich, and there's, uh, there's people like it's for celebrities as well. Mm. Like, people are uh, just look it up, like Jude Law, Cardi de Levine, Harry Styles, and Rihanna have gone there. Mm. So like it's a it's a big deal. They give you like free booze the whole night, just like vodka just pouring in like no one's business. And then at some point the show starts, and I had no idea what to expect. One of them was a like, drag king that sang, beautiful singing. Um, we had a host, um, a gay man, and he was. Phenomenal, he commanded the stage. And there was this performer, and her whole performance was like she brought out, she was fully naked, or she was wearing a robe, and then she brings out this massive frame that you could fit her whole body in there. As you like, and she was pretending it was like a mirror. So, like, us as the oh, audience okay. mm -hmm. were like behind the mirror, mm. and she was just seeing like basically the mirror itself. She obviously got naked, like full naked, you could see everything. Um, nothing nudity there as well. <laughs> she just put it like she puts like shaving cream all over her body, like everywhere, and she gets a razor and starts shaving her body. But like she grabs her dick, like stretches it out, like the whole like pubic area, then turns around, like spreads those ass cheeks like no one's business. There was nothing to hide this, by the way. You could see everything, and like some people were like, "Welcome to London." Yeah, and some people were like this close. Like the I stage is here. We were here. <laughs> This yeah. is like spiritual experience, yeah. and then we had another naked performer doing aerials all up, like above us with like with a ring, mm. and it was just phenomenal mm. experience. Someone was singing, someone was singing, some dancing, and oh, the other one, the second performance she did, she had someone tied. Has, have you, do you know Pink, the singer? Mm -hmm. Do you know uh, Please Don't Leave Me, the song? No. Um, there's a scene that she has someone straight into a chair arm and legs and the whole premise is like a full table like with food and stuff and the whole premise of this is like she, he's her like prey or something and I kid you not I'm not even making this up she grabs obviously fake like knife and fork and she goes and cuts his dick off and she eats it <laughs> and then there's blood everywhere she actually oh. takes the blood and then bathes in it and like just wraps it all over her body. That's insane. And she, I love art. I'm not kidding. She, in front of everyone, she started fingering herself with the blood as lube. Let's go. I am not even kidding. It was so much. So I had no warning that this is what cabaret. I knew what cabaret is. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was cabaret. Extent, yeah. Not that yeah. thing. Yeah. So yeah, there's like this, this girly, like full on fingering herself with, with fucking blood as lube. And I'm like, wow, okay. Jesus Christ. And yeah, that was just a fucking amazing. It was so good. It was so like wild. But so this is all the time now. It's well. Yeah, it's demonetized. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, that's also it's, true. it's also banned in five countries. <laughs> yeah, they <it's true. laughs> <laughs> Cut that out, cut that out. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing performance. And I've been invited again this Friday. It's such an, such an experience. I would recommend. You want to drink go. <laughs>
thousand shots of fire. I said I'm not a serial killer. Do you wanna come hang out tonight? We could dice some lime, dice for some men to fill us off the plea and twine. Oh, those blue lines were throwing knives when they caught me. I thought I'd die. Didn't even try. You said, you said I'm kinda nervous. I've never done this thing before. I looked into your eyes and said, "Said I'm not a serial killer." What song is this? Another one that I wrote a long time ago, before I transitioned actually, which is oh. why I just bleeded it out one of the lyrics says like this doesn't really work anymore. But it's getting awful late tonight. Our sugar straws are melted, but you wear my appetite. Prise à six heures et de l'aube de mon cœur. And this song I actually wrote as a love song to my to my ex. Oh. And I couldn't play it for years, but I, I recently decided I actually still really love it. Yeah. But I needed to rewrite it because it includes the whole crux of the song is that like my ex had never been with a boy before, and so the lyric is um. Said I'm kind of nervous. I've only kissed one boy before. Well, I looked into your eyes and said, "How about one more?" And it's a really cute lyric. It's really and I'm frustrated because it's such a cute lyric. Obviously, I could all... just keep it in. Yeah. But it's such a personal song yeah. that it's like, and it doesn't really work. From like, I've only kissed one trans before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like maybe one girl before. Yeah, maybe I do just switch the genders, yeah. or, but that implies that it's like this. I don't know. I almost want to say I've never kissed a girl like you before, but then that like immediately like gives chaser vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of nervous. I've never kissed a girl like you before. I like the I do kind of like the line I've never kissed a girl like you before. Like even though it's a little fetishistic, it's like it's true to my experience. A lot of guys are kind of like that. So get you here. You mean it's Soviet socialist republics Russian <laughs> Russian S F S R S F F S R Go commies. I'm almost a little bit sad about this, but also excited. But I'm gonna have to basically just exclusively read philosophy texts for my course. I kind of think gender trouble after whipping girl is gonna feel a little bit like, I don't know, less interesting to me. Yeah. But it's okay. For philosophy, and I'm super not interested in fucking gender theory anymore. I'm kind of feeling a little burnt out of it too, to be honest. Because I made so many videos about gender. Gender is subsumed such a huge part of my life. There's this part of me that's like, I don't want to fucking ever talk about gender ever again. Like, I want to, like, pretend gender doesn't even exist now. Mm. And I want to just live my life as a non-binary girly and just yeah. not fucking think about it anymore. I remember when you left Instagram for, like, two days. You were like, I, I always do, I'm, like, I'm leaving Instagram. Saw, I, excuse me. I'm no, leaving no. it for good this time. No. Goodbye, everyone. I like, know you're going to miss me so much. Fuck <laughs> off. Oh, there you say something entirely <laughs> accurate. Like, it's it's really I feel always feel like such a fucking clown doing this because it's like every time I'm like guys this time yeah, I'm for real. Yeah. Every other time I was just I was just mm -hmm. lying to myself, but this time mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave for good. And yeah. it's like every time like a week. Yeah, yeah. I was At sad best. when you left though. So I was glad that you came back. 
<laughs> you're like, I was like, where are my hype girls? <laughs> Nobody else puts me on their story with cute sapphic songs. Not one other person. My ego plummeted for those two days. <laughs> I was lost. I was lost in the darkness. <laughs> I wrote this song and it's about saying goodbye to testosterone and in theory I could just do as many verses as I could come up with but it is a little bit difficult when I don't write down the words cool and I want to like with each verse say a different goodbye in like a different way or a different language. Mm. I think then Offen immer Wiedersehen is good. Offen immer Wiedersehen. Yeah. Italian. I have no idea. Viva <laughs> Teddy. It's not Sunday. It's like a children's Ciao, Teddy. 